Jeffrey. So what I wanted to do first was tell me, tell you all about why I do what I do, um, because it's uh, the question I get asked the most common from my patients is why do you do this? So I'll just tell you a short story about myself. Basically, I'm a nurse practitioner and in America, I think they're also called physician's assistants. And so a nurse practitioner is somebody or a physician's assistant who is a nurse originally and then is able to prescribe and diagnose illness. And it's an extra two years master's degree and you have to have worked in your area of specialty for a minimum of five years before you qualify to do that master's degree. And I started off my life as a remote area nurse. So I worked in a lot of communities in remote areas around Australia um, and also in at the Cocos Islands and Christmas Island, um, where I was the only nurse, the only practitioner there that was able to prescribe. So I spent a lot of time as a generalist nurse practitioner in rural areas. And then I went back to a country town um, up in 2011 that had a lot of... Um, didn't have very many female practitioners there. And I set up a private practice. And because I was one of the few female practitioners, I found I got a lot of patients with sexual health issues, a lot of women, but also a lot of guys because they felt more comfortable, I think, speaking to a woman than they did usually a male doctor about something so personal, um, which was surprising to me because I thought that men would probably prefer to speak to other, um, other men, but they didn't. So one day in particular, I had this lady come in, her, let's call her Grace for the purpose. And Grace used to be a very senior nurse in the hospital I worked in when I just qualified from university as a registered nurse. And I was working in an emergency department there. And I used to work night shift with her quite often. And she was in her 40s and I was 21. And she used to come to work and tell me about her amazing sex life. Um, which as a 21-year-old kind of grossed me out because I was a bit shocked that um, people at that age of 40 still had sex. So, um, and I know, I hope that you're all having a giggle now and you've probably all got children that are in their 20s and probably think it's pretty gross that you still want to have sex. So anyway, she came in this day and she had to have a pap smear. And when I went to put the speculum in to have a look in her vagina, it was very dry and it was quite painful. And I said to her, I'm really surprised about this, you know, there's things we can do to help. Um, and she said, burst into tears and said, it doesn't matter. My husband had his prostate out two years ago and we've had no intimacy ever since. He won't even hold my hand. He won't cuddle me anymore. He won't do anything. And I was just, she was obviously really sad about that. And I said to her, you know, this is a really sad thing. There must be something we can do. She proceeded to tell me that her, the GP had given him a prescription for Viagra, didn't work. Um, but he had just taken it and expected it to pop up and he hadn't actually been given any explanation of how to take it properly. And she also actually didn't care if they never had intercourse again, it would have been lovely, but she just wanted to be able to be affectionate to him and not have him reject her. So I got him to come in and we had a chat and it turned out that he was severely depressed. So we dealt with his depression um, and we also talked about the fact that Grace was feeling really lonely and she just wanted him to hold her hand and cuddle her like he used to and all of those things. So we got them both in together and they both had a very open and honest chat. And I explained to them how they should be using um, these tablets like Viagra and things like that more effectively and to give it a go. And when they went off, I would find out what I could do to help because I was sure there were things out there. I then contacted a specialist that I knew who was 600 kilometres away, a urologist, and asked him if there was any way I could help. And he said there was. Um, and so I went off and found out all about it. And they came back and we basically worked through their problem. And a few months later, they came back in to see me and were holding hands, giggling and like teenagers again, because they'd reconnected and things were working for them sexually. But most importantly, they were falling in love again and they were really happy together. And they sent me a lovely letter and I went home to my husband and said, I want to become a sexologist because there's not many people doing this and I really want to help these people and I feel like that's where my career is going. So I went back to university and I did a, another qualification in sexology and that I finished that six years ago and I've been working predominantly as a nurse practitioner sexologist since um, and probably two-thirds of my practice is in patients with prostate cancer um, and the others are women who are often the partners of the men with prostate cancer or other issues such as erectile dysfunction in anyone else or um, porn addiction and all sorts of things, premature ejaculation. But today we're going to talk about prostate cancer. But I think it's important to know where I come from and why this is important to me and you. So 
I love this cartoon. I think that probably the biggest thing I see when in heterosexual couples is that the woman feels like Grace did and she feels a little bit sad and a little bit rejected and often they don't understand. And the biggest issue is communication. So I think for both partners, whether it's a single sex part, a male, a gay couple or a heterosexual couple, it's really important that communication is the key and that we talk to each other and know how we're going. So let's just talk a little bit about intimacy. It is really important. It's really important for men and women and it's important for their quality of life. And what I've seen is that urologists and specialists and adults and every, all those people are fantastic at curing people of cancer. But often that quality of life afterwards, you might live for another 30 years, 40 years in some cases after your cancer has been cured and that quality of life is really important. And intimacy is a big part of that. It's important for our relationships, it's important for our mental health, and it's important for our physical health. Because when we have intimacy, we get rushes of all these positive hormones and it makes us feel good. So most importantly, I'm not here to tell you that sex after prostate cancer treatment is gonna be the same as it's been your whole life, because it's not. And whether you had prostate cancer treatment or not, or you've had a diagnosis of it, your sex life is going to change as you get older but it still can be good. And in some cases, I've even had couples, believe it or not, tell me that it's been a blessing in disguise because once they were, had the diagnosis, it's the first time in years they've actually considered their sex life and their intimate life and talked to each other about it. And sometimes things have got boring and it's an opportunity to change the script. The other thing I think is really important is for people to know that sexual dysfunction isn't just for people who have prostate cancer and treatments. You know, 30 to 50% of the general population, and that's male and females, have sexual dysfunction of some kind. People with depression have an even higher chance of 90%. And there is a very large discrepancy in the statistics following prostate cancer. So if you look in the literature, there's about 29 to 60% sexual dysfunction long ongoing. However, I think it is really important to remember that most research is usually about five to 10 years behind what's published, behind what's actually happening in real life, because it takes a long time to get research disseminated into the community. So I'm definitely seeing much better stats than that. I think um, men who have prostate cancer treatment now and do penile rehabilitation, we're getting about a 70% return to spontaneous function, 60 to 70% within two years. And um, other than that, that, even the ones that don't return to spontaneous function we've got about a 95% success rate of them being able to re-establish an intimate relationship using other means with their partner. So sexual dysfunction is multifactorial. It can be caused by the disease itself or the treatment of the disease. And that can be any disease, not just prostate cancer. It can be depression. Medications that we use to treat depression don't help. Medications that we use for high blood pressure can often affect our sexual function. So there's a whole lot of things going on there. Age, just like the rest of our body, our sexual function goes downhill. I turned 50 recently and I, I feel like a lot of parts of my body aren't working like they used to and I think sexual function just falls into the same. And the other really important thing is your relationships and your social connections with people. These things really do affect your sexual function. So with all of this, I've, I came along, I came to creating this three-step system to help men overcome the effects of their prostate cancer treatment. Because what I found when I first started working in this field is that there's a lot of research out there about how we can help men, but there wasn't really a cohesive pr program that you could do with anybody. And when I wanted to help men, I had to go along and look at all the research and figure out what was good and what wasn't, and then how to put all the pieces together in a jigsaw puzzle so that it would be simple for people to follow. So that's, you know, I, I think that is what this program is. It's nothing new. It's a collation of all of the information that's out there available and turned into a program that you should be able to do 10, 15 minutes max a day to be able to get your function back and um, maintain an intimate life. So basically I want to talk to you about what it used to be like. So these three points here, are things that men say to me that they really miss now that they're not getting erections anymore and that they didn't realise, they didn't know they would miss them until they did. So one is they'd really like to 
to be able to wake up with an erection in the morning. The other ones is that they never had to think about how their penis worked before. I have a lot of men and their partners say, you know, it just always worked. And I didn't really think about it before how it worked. And I've, I've never even thought about what the, what the physiology of a penis is and why it does what it does. And the other big point is a lot of men will tell me that they feel like they've lost their masculinity. And this isn't about just sexual function. This is about, you know, having a penis, work, a working penis is like a woman having breasts. That's our breasts are our femininity. It's what makes a lot of us women feel feminine and having a functioning penis, whether they're using it or not, is what makes them feel masculine. And I think this is often not, respected or or thought about as as it should be it's actually a really important part of life we want every part of our body to work and be healthy whether we're using it or not so I want to show you how to overcome erectile dysfunction and that's what my program does but the other thing is is it stops shrinkage so the big point about when you stop getting spontaneous erectile function that's when your penis starts to shrink so We'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but it's not, you know, it's not all about sexual function. Penile rehabilitation is about maintaining the length and the girth of your penis. And I have seen men who say, I can't even stand up to pee in a urinal, in a, a urinal anymore, which is really difficult when you go to a public place where there's only one sit down toilet and the rest are all stand ups. Or I don't know, I've always had a little bit of penis envy. I'd love to be able to go camping and go behind a tree and standing. So, um, yeah, I think this whole penile shrinkage thing is often not considered enough. It's not just about sexual function. It is also about stopping shrinkage. So penile rehabilitation is for you if you'd like your penis to return to its pre-prostate cancer functionality, if your intimate relationships are important to you and you want to feel like a man again. This is Jeffrey. He's feeling very buff and proud of himself here. So what are the goals of penile rehabilitation? The goals are we want to stop penile shrinkage. We want you to re-establish intimacy with your partner. And if you're single, I want you to be able to feel confident that your body isn't going to let you down and that you can go out and date. Because I see a lot of men who are single and, you know, they say, I'd really like to meet a new partner, but I can't because it's not working. And, you know, I think that's a really sad thing. You shouldn't have to spend the rest of your life alone if you want to be partnered because your bits aren't working. So I really want to be able to help people to re-establish intimacy with their current partner or find a new partner. Um, I love this phrase, turn your software into firmware and then hopefully hardware. Um, this actually, I stole this from one of my patients. He was a computer tech and he said to me, I used to have hardware when I was young and then I've had this surgery and now I've got software. And then as things got better in the rehab program, he went to firmware and now he's back to hardware. So I think that's a really excellent phrase. And as I said, I'd really want to help you with the penile rehab program, feel your masculine self again. So this slide, very busy, but I just want to show you that there is a lot of research that says that penile rehabilitation helps. But this isn't just something I've pulled out of my head. You know, penile rehabilitation does help. There's just not that many people who are doing it. So um, you guys have all... All, all, and ladies here today have all come from Victoria's um, list of followers. So you all know that this research is out there, but a lot of people don't. So I think it's important to know that the information's there. It's just our aim to disseminate that to the public. So when you look at the research, there's a few, three different discoveries that I made that I was looking at. And basically, an active penis equals a healthy penis. It really, and I'm, most people have heard this expression of, use it or lose it. Um, and it, it's the same with any muscle. If you imagine, you know, you're probably sitting down right now. And if you imagine that you're sitting in a chair and um, if you sat in that same chair for the next six months and you didn't move, those muscles, quadricep muscles in your leg would shrink and atrophy. And that's what happens to your penis tissue because it's full of smooth muscle if you don't exercise it. So rocket fuel for your penis. Rocket fuel for your penis is basically nitrous oxide gas. So nitrous oxide gas is produced in the penis and it causes vasodilation so the blood can come in. Now that's a very simple explanation of how an erection works, but having nitrous oxide gas is really important. And the more you exercise your whole body and your penis tissues, the more nitrous oxide gas you're gonna have. So we really need to exercise that penis tissue. 
So this here, another busy slide, but it's basically showing you all the smooth muscle that is inside the penis shaft. And that's what we need to be healthy and stretching and lengthened in order to make sure everything's working how it should be. So it's not really that hard to exercise your penis. So here we have two different pumps, both of which I recommend. The um, Vacurect, a lot of you may already have because you uh, probably bought one off, um, off Victoria and they're brilliant. They're probably the best pump on the market. They're certainly the best one to use with rings. Um, and so if you don't have the program that we offer comes with a Vacurect, um, and I'll explain to you a bit more about what's in the program afterwards. But the other option is a bath mate, which is good for guys who are incontinent because you can use it in the shower. The problem with the bath mate is it just doesn't work well with rings. So it's, it's, if you're not into rings, it's a good option, but the Vacurect does both. It's very good for rehab and it's possible to use it with rings for sexual function. Vitamins for your penis. So we all have heard about the blue pill, the Viagra, um, but there's a lot, I, you've got to think of these drugs. Viagra is in a family of drugs called PDE5 drugs. And the purpose of these PDE5 drugs is to make sure the nitrous oxide gas that causes the vasodilation in the penis hangs around and doesn't go away. So the first one on the market was Viagra followed by Cialis, followed by Spedra or Spendra if you're in America. Um, now these drugs are very safe. They get a bit of a bad rap and there's a lot of urban myths around these drugs, but they're actually safer than Panadol. And all they do is cause vasodilation and stop the nitrous oxide gas from going away so you can get better vasodilation and more blood flow into the penis. And they have two purposes. One is you can use them to get erections in some cases, but they don't work for everybody. And in the program, I explain when they will work and when they won't work. But what they definitely do is in the correct daily dose, they will help you keep your penis healthy. So that's why I say they're a vitamin pill for your penis. There's two different ways you take these pills. It's not just all about erections. So they're a very important part of rehab, but you just need to know how and when to take them. The second discovery when I looked at the research is that penile rehabilitation can prevent shrinkage. Now, this is really important. And as I said to you before, this is all about exercising your penis. It's about stretching it, keeping it healthy and using it so you don't lose it. And penile rehabilitation can also help and definitely does with return of your spontaneous erections. Now, I think here it's important to mention that men who have surgery are usually have no erections immediately post-op for quite some time, up to two years is how long it takes. So if you think that a healthy penis is going up and down at night time, semi-erect or erect, if you're really young, 20 to 30 times a week, that is your body's way of taking the penis to the gym. Now, I always say that if God must be a man because why else is the penis and the clitoris the only part of the body that exercises itself? So I hope that's probably really politically incorrect for me to say, but anyway, I've said it now. So it's important to exercise your penis. I can't stress that enough. And before you develop erectile dysfunction, either because of radiation or whatever treatment it is you've had, you, you will have been getting spontaneous erection whilst you're asleep that you may not have even been aware of. But now it's um, really important to know that, you know, you need to do it for it. Here's just another example of a paper that supports this. And we will send you all the slides in this recording so that after the um, webinar is finished. So if anyone's interested in looking up the research, they can. And there's some more. So discovery number three, you're never too old to be sexually active. I see a lot of couples who come in and say to me, oh, I really would like to be still sexually active. Do you think I'm too old? And I say, never. I have my oldest patient, I tell him he's my pinup boy, he's 96 and his wife is 89 and they've been using injectable therapies for the last 20 years um, and they have regular sex life and they're very much in love with each other. They've been together for 55 years plus, I think now. Absolutely gorgeous couple and, you know, they both get a lot of enjoyment out of being intimate with each other. So you're never too old to have sex. The other interesting thing is that uh, the World Health Organization actually lists sexual health and sexual safety and intimacy under their basic human rights, along with food, water and shelter. 
So I think if the World Health Organization list this as one of the most important things, then clearly it's important. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. Now I'm just checking that I'm not getting text uh, messages from Corazon that I, you can't hear me or something, but it all seems fine. So the penile rehabilitation program has three steps. We need to get your, get your penis exercising. We need to get you on the vitamin pills, but they both have particular regimes that you need to do. And we're also, then we hopefully get you to the winner's spot. So this program has seven modules. The first module, I teach you all about the penis. So I think it's important to know how something works. You can't fix your car if you don't know how it works. You can't, I don't know, get rid of the cockroaches in your house unless you know what they're doing there. So we, it's important, knowledge is power. And so in that module, I, I teach you, and it's a video with me talking, and there's also a slide show. And you can stop and start it and watch it. And there's a workbook that you can work through as well that has information. So I think it's important to know why your penis does what it does. So you're not just randomly doing things without knowing what you're doing. Module two is for prehabilitation. So there is also a lot of research that says it's important and we have better outcomes for people who do the prehabilitation. So before you're about to start prostate cancer treatment, it's really, if you, if you know about this program beforehand, it's important there's some things you can do that will help you along your way and help improve your outcomes. For anyone out there who is a long time post treatment and things haven't been good for ages, it's never too late. You can always improve what you're doing. But if you're not there yet, then if you haven't had treatment yet, it's a perfect time to start to think about what's going on down there and how you can, how you can improve your outcomes. Um, I have had seen men as far as 10 years post-op that at that far post-op, we're not gonna get you back to spontaneous erection, but everything I teach you in this program will enable you to enjoy intimacy again. And we can definitely help with the shrinkage and getting some of your penile girth back and length back. Module three is rehab. So that goes through when to start rehabilitation, when your treatment's finished and, or during your treatment phase, depending on what sort of treatment you're having and how long it goes for and exactly what to do. Then we have the eager beaver section. Now this is for the guys and girls, the partners of the guys, if they're girls, this is for men and their partners. I'm just gonna rephrase that who don't wanna wait two years post-treatment to get things back to normal. They just want to have an erection tomorrow and they wanna get it going. So in that, I teach injectable therapies. Now, probably a lot of you are cringing and thinking, I'm never going to stick a needle in my penis, but I'm here to tell you that it honestly doesn't hurt. Now, I wanna show you, Jeffrey again. Now, the way I teach is with this little thing here, which is an auto injector. Now, you don't even see a needle. The auto injector goes onto the shaft of the penis. You press a button, push a plunger down, take it out and it's gone. The other, you get an erection in 10 minutes. And the best thing about this is there is no nerve endings in this shaft of the penis. There's a lot on the skin. So when you hit the skin with the needle, you'll feel like a flick, but you won't feel anything else because it's actually not possible because there is no nerves in the spongy tissue inside the penis. So I have given, thousands and thousands and thousands of these injections. I see on average 90 men a week. And they, every time I give the first injection, they say, I didn't believe you, but I honestly didn't hurt. And I have only ever had two men after their first injection that have gone home and come back and said, I don't wanna learn. Everybody else has learned how to do it themselves. So if you read in the literature, there's a lot of fallout of people not wanting to do injections, but I really believe that that is because they're not taught how to do it properly. And you know, if you're taught how to do it properly and you understand what you're doing, it is a very simple procedure. And the other great thing is it's, I've even got patients, believe it or not, who they get to a point where the tablets will start working for them, such as Viagra and Cialis, but they stick with injections because when they take Viagra or Cialis, they get a bad headache and they don't feel very well. And when they use injectable therapies, they don't get any systemic side effects. So they much prefer it. So. It's important to keep an open mind about injections. And if you um, look at that module of the program, you'll find out all about it and how to do it. Now, if you're in Australia, I will prescribe the medication and I can teach you how to do it with a Zoom on a Zoom call. 
If you live in another country, then what I will do is find someone close to you where you live that can prescribe the medication and I'll liaise with them. And then I will teach you how to do it properly online. We then go to module five. Now, I don't want you to think it's all smooth sailing because it's not. And I have had a lot of feedback from men about things that they find troubling. In the, probably the most common one is most guys say that um, they feel like they've never been so obsessed with their penile function and their life feels like it's revolving around it. And that's why we try and reduce what you have to do each day to within 10 minutes a day so it doesn't become a, a full-on task every day just to get things healthy. Module six is survivorship. And so, you know, this we, here we talk about the importance of exercise, diet, alcohol, smoking, how you can optimise your ability not to get cancer back and keep things healthy. Um, you know, and, and we don't, cardiovascular health and penile health are very closely related, which I teach you a lot about in the program. And so if we're looking after your penis, we're also looking after your heart. So I think this is probably the most important module of this program. And module seven is just a wrap up of everything that happens. So what do you get when you get the program? The program has everything in it that you would need to navigate your way through penile rehabilitation. So you get access to all the lessons and the modules. Um, you do get a vacuerect pump, which I've put somewhere and now I can't see here. Um, but if you already have one, then I strongly recommend a, another implement called a Pulse Duo, which I don't know where I put him now. A Pulse Duo is a sex toy, but it's a vibration device. And there's quite a lot of research that shows that vibration into the shaft of the penis can help stimulate nerves. So there is a machine, a medical device called a Vibirect, which is designed specifically for this. However, it's a kind of clunky implement that um, looks like a set of salad servers. And um, if you want to go to my website, I have a blog on there about um, comparing the Vibirect, the Nero and the Pulse Duo because I made my poor suffering husband try them all and it was quite a funny exercise really, so it might be worth reading. Um, in fact, I'll get Corazon to send a link to that article when she sends out the webinar to you all. So yeah, the, we can swap the Vacurec pump out for the Pulse Duo because the, you don't have to use vibration, but using vibration can definitely help with, um, with getting the nerves to regenerate and wake up. The other great thing about a Pulse Duo is that it's a sex toy for couples. So there's two motors in it, one which stimulates the frenulum, which is this little bit underneath the penis here, which I call the boy clitoris, um, because that's a very sensitive part. And it's actually, if anyone's tried to masturbate with a flaccid penis, they'll know that it's actually quite hard work. So um, this makes it a lot easier on your elbow. And there's also another motor with it that sits on, if your partner is a woman, it sits on their vulva and vibrates onto their clitoris. So you can both have mutual pleasure and be skin to skin, but not have to worry about whether or not you've got an erection. And if you're a same sex couple, then you can do very similar things with that. So. If, if you've already got a Vacurect pump, don't worry because we will swap it out for a Pulse Duo. Um, the program also comes with an injectees, which is this little guy here, which is absolutely imperative. I don't know about you guys, but if I had to stick a needle into my nipple, there's absolutely no way I'd do it. If I had to stick it straight in, but if I had a little button I could press, I'd probably consider it. So I think one of these is excellent. You get um, some lubricant, just a good quality lube by Eros that is very safe and it's very good for aging vaginas and penises and it's made out of really lovely, feels really nice. We give you a workbook and the workbook in it has step-by-step -step worksheets and tips and it has every slide printed and little sections so you can write your notes as you're watching. But the most important part of that workbook is there's a whole lot of worksheets in there where you can record your medication challenges, so the tablet challenges, and record what's going on and also your leakage if you've got any urine leakage because we talk a lot about pelvic floor exercises in the program and how they can help. So the idea is, is that you'll be able to fill out this booklet, email it to me before your two consults that you get with me during the time, and I can talk you through it and we can really tweak the program to suit your specific need because everybody is different. And that's why we offer these two consults in the program, because I wanna be able to tweak your in, in individual program for you because some people will need more of one and less of another. 
The other thing is, the idea is, is that you can take those worksheets to your primary healthcare provider where you live and your physiotherapist if you're seeing one, because that information will be very useful to them. Um, you can get a digital copy as well of the workbook. Um, you obviously get free delivery and it's in just a plain box. We're not going to have a picture of Jeffrey on the front so your neighbours know what you're up to. We have a Facebook group called the Willy Whisperers where you can all talk to each other and support each other and you get 12 months access into the course or the program. So this is what it looks like. Um, if you have a look on your screen on the right hand side, that's what the Pulse Duo looks like. The little round button is the remote control so the partner can use that and um, everything else comes with it. Um, the penile rehabilitation program, as I said to you, you know how penile rehab works. You now, you now know that it exists if you didn't before, and I've shown you how, how this can help. So I just really wanted to sum up now and then get your questions in the question and answer so I can answer them for you. Uh, the program is a good option for you because it'll save lots of time sifting through all the information to come up with a cohesive plan yourself. You may not have access to the right specialist near you who can help you with this and this one is available online. You can do it in the privacy of your own home and we're going to try and turn your software into firmware. It's not for you though if you're not committed to your overall health and well-being. You know, there's no point purchasing something if you're not going to do the homework. So if you haven't got 10 minutes a day, to you know, dedicate to your penis health, then, then it's not for you. If you don't care about your penile function, then it's not for you. And I don't just mean sexual function. I do have a lot of men on this penile rehabilitation program who aren't interested in sexual function and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, but they just don't want their penis to shrink and they want to be able to pee standing up and they just wanna know that every part of their body works. And if you're not, willing to invest in your health and your future relationships, you know, in your time, then it's really not worth it for you. But it is for you if you've had a prostate cancer diagnosis, if you're motivated to improve your situation, if sexual intimacy and your penile health is important to you and your partner, if you have one, um, and you do need not great computer skills, but reasonable ones. If you've got onto this webinar and you're watching this now, your computer skills are perfect because you only need to be able to do what you're doing now. And we also have Corazon who's available um, every day in business hours and on the internet, on, on email to be able to support you with any issues that you have. She can talk you through technical issues because she's the technical whiz. Uh, we have, sorry, back to the technical bit though. We have had quite a few men already go through the program and they haven't had any issues with um, the technical issues so far. They've all found it very easy. And, and I did also send it to a lot of my regular patients to test it before we released it to the market. And none of them had any issues with the technical ability. So what, if you're interested, you can, go, we're gonna send you the link um, straight after the webinar, or you can type it in now. Um, we are giving you a discount today. And if you would like to talk to me more about it, I've opened up my book, um, my booking book, and there's, you can have a 15 minute free chat with me about your individual situation to see. But I do really encourage you to put your questions and answers in now because we'll go through those in a little while. So how much does it cost? That's probably the big question. If, because you came to this webinar, you'll get $100 US off. So it's normally 1,667, um, but, to do it. If you get it in the next 24 hours, it'll be 1,567, or you can have two monthly installments at $900 each. As soon as you make the first payment, we send you the box with everything in and you'll get immediate access to all the online stuff um, and we'll get everything sent out to you. So just because I think it's important that people should be able to know what they can do themselves to maximize their chances of recovery, then this is what you can do for yourself. You can make sure you're eating a healthy diet. You need to exercise. Exercise is the most important thing for every single part of your body and your penis isn't excluded. You really need to stop smoking. There's nothing good about it. Minimize your alcohol consumption, practice pleasure. And I know that um, Victoria Cullen has an excellent pleasure program available on her touchy subject site and it's brilliant so I really encourage you to do that if you haven't already you really need to think about your mindset you need to be positive about it if you go around saying I'm never going to be able to overcome this problem then you're not 
So you do need to manage your own mindset, manage your stress and improve your relationship. And I really think that this is often an opportunity for couples to really talk about their relationship because it's, it's an awkward conversation to have, even with people that you've been with for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, and so sometimes having a prostate cancer diagnosis is something that opens up the lines of communication. Um, and also, I think it's important that to people realise that this is grief, you know, like losing a part of your body that functions, whether it's your penis, a stroke in your arm doesn't work, whether it's your eyesight, your hearing, it causes grief. And you need to acknowledge that and, and don't think, I just have to toughen up, acknowledge it and deal with that grief and, and think about that. It's okay to feel sad about it and, and try and turn things around. You're not in control of nerve damage, how, how your nerve repairs, your age, and what your erections were like before you had treatment. So you can't change those things, but there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do yourself to help things get better. This is just as an aside, um, I also have a podcast called The Penis Project and the website is there, thepenisproject.org. Um, the Penis Project is a podcast that myself and a colleague, Dr. Joe Milios, started over a year ago now where we interview men and their partners and specialists in the field about their journey with a penis problem. They're not all uh, prostate cancer, the majority are. Some of them are testicular cancer, bladder cancer, Peroni's disease, all sorts of subjects are discussed on there. There's, there's a few specialists, but I think there's a lot of information from health professionals out there, but we don't often get to hear real people's stories. And that was the aim of the Penis Project, was to listen to real people's stories. And I think um, it's been really valuable to a lot of people who listen. We've got over 30,000 people listening now. And it's been really valuable to me. I have learned so much from the people who I've interviewed. And um, I think a lot of them have been really brave. Most of them give a false name, which enables them to speak openly and tell their story. So this is just what a couple of the patients have said about me. And I've never really feel weird that, but you can always look up my Google reviews. Um, but these are thing, common things that patients say to me. I get emails quite often saying that they've really enjoyed talking to me. They found it difficult. It was something they were really nervous about coming, but they found it valuable and comfortable when it was a difficult subject. And I'm more than happy for people to look at my Google reviews. And I think that you'll find they say similar things. So if you want more information, it's here. You can email me on melissa at rshealth.com.au. Um, and for the, if it's a clinical query, for the next 24 hours, I'm not seeing patients. So if you email me, I will answer within 24 hours, in the next 24 hours, um, your specific problem. If it's after that, I'll be back consulting again. So it'll be a bit slower. I'll have some dribs and drabs, which I'll get to my emails. So if you wanna be answered quickly, please send your email in the next 24 hours. Um, otherwise, please be patient with me because I'm seeing 15 people a day with these issues and, and I'll have to see them as well and then answer you afterwards. If you want any um, administration queries, so you want to book um, an, an online consult with me, then you can go to admin at rshealth.com.au. But if you just wanted to book a time to talk about how this program would work in your specific time, Corazon is going to send you a chat with Melissa link that you can get online and book that online. And I've blocked out parts of my diary over the next few weeks so that I have time to talk to everybody if you want to, or you can just go straight, buy it and book your first consult with me because you get those two free consults. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And just turn to this screen. Now, there's some questions in that. Now, I'm just going to write. Um, I'm just going to just tell everybody happy. Everyone can still hear. Can some people just type in the chat that they're all happy and they can still hear? And then I'll start reading out the questions. Great. Okay. So the first question is, hi, Melissa. I had a prostatectomy six years ago. I have ED, erectile dysfunction, and need to use injections. My question is that I can have a strong nocturnal erection but can't have wakeful erections. Why is this so? 
I hear that quite often, actually. There's a couple of reasons. One is your testosterone is usually higher at night time. Oh, that's, you can only see half my face there, can't you? Um, the other reason is adrenaline is erection kryptonite. So most people have heard of Superman. And if Superman is faced with a piece of kryptonite, he turns from a tough guy to a melted chocolate bar. And that is what adrenaline is like. So when you're asleep, you're calm and you don't have adrenaline rushing through your body. But when you're awake and you're feeling anxious, is my penis going to work? Then your body gets a big flush of adrenaline because you're in flight and flight and it makes your penis go down. So I would be saying to you that I imagine there is a little bit of, of anxiety going on with that, understandably. And that is definitely something that we could work around. Um, rehabilitation is important because you want to encourage those erections when you want them. I, I imagine that if you were taking medication like PDE5 medications correctly um, and try them all because it's important to know that if Viagra doesn't work for you, one of the others might and there's four very good ones on the market. Um, and yeah, different things work for different people. But I think you will find that that issue that you're having is probably related to what's going on in your mind and and there's certainly some things we could do there to encourage you to feel a little bit more relaxed and see how they go during um, when you're actually having intercourse how does being on a blood thinner affect your erections it doesn't actually affect your erections but what it can do is give you a small bruise if you use a pump and or and or injectable injectable therapies but it doesn't, it doesn't negatively affect your erectile function at all. So a bruise on the shaft of your penis is not an issue, you know? So a little tiny bruise on your, on your penis, no problem. So it doesn't stop you from using injectable therapies. It doesn't stop you from using a pump. It just means we would tweak the way you did that a little bit. And if some of these questions I'm not answering enough, please feel free, the people asking them, to ask for more. Uh, there's another question. Can I take Viagra on a regular basis as rehab? Yes, you can, but there's a specific dose you need to take. Um, so that, that's all involved in the program. The better drug for rehab is actually Cialis or Tadadafil. Uh, so, but yes, you can take Viagra, but you would be better off with Cialis um, for that purpose. Uh, is there a form of electrostimulation that can help? If so, where are the plaids placed? I haven't read any research that says electrostimulation would help. Um, I think you'd be much better off with vibration therapy such as a pulse duo or a Vibrect because that has been shown to make differences to nerve regeneration in not just in penises, but everywhere. So I think you would be much better off with vibration therapy than you would be with electrostimulation. Uh, this gentleman, I'm just gonna have a drink of water. I feel like I've been talking nonstop. You're probably all sick of my voice. So I'm three years post-op, um, having injected for two and a half years and starting to recover injections and needing much less. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Also reacting now to Cialis and Viagra. Will your program be more help to me at this stage of my recovery? It depends what you've been doing. So with your injections, sounds like you're doing great with those. So the program might help by just tweaking how you're doing your injections and with your reduction and your dose. And often um, if you're using compounded medicine, often when you're this far post-op, it might be, it's a good thing to change the mix because the, usually the drugs you use earlier on uh, longer acting and as you get further down then you um, further into the recovery process you need to change medicines because there's medicines that are shorter acting so that's as your nerves heal and and as an aside I think of a penis as a kettle with an electric cord going into a power system in the wall the power in the wall is your libido the penis is your kettle and the cord is your nerves that give you erections that are usually around your prostate. And so at the beginning, when you're straight after surgery or when all your erections are gone from radiation, it's like someone stole the cord. But as things are coming back, as they are for this guy we're talking about now, it's like someone put a frayed cord there and you want an electrician to come along and wrap some tape around it and that would fix it. So 
yes, your cord is back and it's frayed. And yes, the program would be more help because I think at your stage, you could add in vibration, definitely. You could, should, if you're not doing it, be taking a daily dose of, of PDE5 medication to encourage more blood flow. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of other information in there, depending on whether or not you're using pelvic floor exercises and all of those things. There's a lot of things that you could still do to assist that recovery even more. Uh, I have a lot of trouble being intimate with my wife and I don't know why. I hear this so often and I hear a lot of men who are actually really lonely because they just don't commit with their wife and they don't connect with their wife anymore. And I think that is often difficult because at this stage of our life, you know, from like 50 onwards, we often are looking after aging parents, grandchildren, all of those things and we've been through parenting often and busy jobs and careers and all of that and then suddenly we find ourselves with more time on our hand and it's quite difficult to get that intimacy back because you didn't realize it was gone until you had time so it's a common problem um, so to the guy who's asking this you're not alone this is a really common problem and I definitely talk in the program a lot about intimacy but I think the other thing that would be good in your case would be to perhaps book an online consult and we can talk about that in more detail. There's certainly some fantastic books and some exercises I could give you as a couple to find a way to start talking about this and, um, and reconnect. Next question. Um, oh, seem to have frozen. Sorry, it's frozen. Uh, do you know, I've definitely frozen. I don't know if you guys can hear me anymore. I'm not sure what's happening. Ah, good. I'm still there. Great. Sorry, I thought I lost you all there for a while. Um, do I know if this can be accessed through health insurance? Nope, it can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Very sad. Um, apparently, um, private health doesn't think that uh, it's important. However, the cost of a pump can be claimed through your health insurance extras if you have a letter supporting penile rehabilitation from your urologist. So, we can do that, but it's not a great help. Uh, so next we have, I'm 43 and I'm two and a half months post-op. Wow, you're young to have this surgery. I'm doing physio, taking the blue pill and getting an erection when masturbating, though not to the same standard. Do I need to be pumping? And if I can get an erection when masturbating? The challenge I have is that I'm single, so it's all down to me and it's hard to tell if the practice would translate to action on the game day. That's a really good question. So masturbating is fantastic. Keep doing it. It's great. But I, you need to be getting your penis erect or semi-erect at least three or four times a week. And I, what I find with people who rely solely on masturbation to get semi-erections when they're at your stage, and you've, by the way, that's an amazing recovery. And every other guy in this chat is probably really jealous that you're doing that well after two and a half months post-op. The problem is, is it becomes a chore and you don't want even solo sex to become a chore. So using a pump would be really helpful because someone your age, you could use a pump five, 10 minutes a day and then you could, um, you know, do the exercise and masturbate when you feel like it because what you don't want is masturbating to become a chore. You want it to be something that you want to do. So I hope that answers that question. But yes, there's certainly... and. Also, as I've said previously, the blue pill, which is Viagra, is not your best option when it comes to um, rehabilitation. You'd be much better off with a daily dose of Cialis, but, um, and all of that's covered in the program. But I think in your case, doing regular pelvic floor exercises, using a pump daily, maintain your masturbation when you want to for solo sex and fun, and changing your PDE5 would be a good option. And the other thing, if you are men who have to masturbate because they don't have a partner or not have to, some it's very enjoyable, but 
the um, pulse duo is a good option for you as well because it just makes masturbation a lot easier because masturbating with a not hard penis is actually quite difficult. Um, I had erections on a bowel motion starting about three weeks after the radical prostatectomy and it was a robotic one. I had significant ED pre-operation. I hear that a lot. It's just because when you um, do a poo, you have the valsalva manoeuvre, you do the vel what's called the valsalva manoeuvre and it pushes blood down and into the penis shaft. So you're just pushing blood into the shaft of the penis. So it's not like a real erection, but it's still good for your penis to get that blood flow. And what have we got here? Missed the bowel motion question. Sorry, is that normal? After six weeks, this reduced. It is normal, very, very normal. Um, it says that he's still highly erectile dysfunction, but the pump and Cavajet seem to work. So Cavajet's an interesting one. I'm personally not a fan of Cavajet because it's it's got one active ingredient in it, which is um, alprostadol. And one in 20 men get an ache in the shaft of the penis with alprostadol. And because of that, if that's the first drug they ever try and they get that, they won't go back to it. But there's a lot of other mixtures we can use if we get it compounded that can give good erections without that pain. The other problem I have with Cavajet is the delivery method is not very easy. You have to stick a needle straight into the shaft of your penis. You can't use an auto injector. So I think there's a lot better options than Cavajet personally, but that's my personal opinion. And if it works for you, that's good. Um, Rob, oh, you mentioned that blood pressure tablets work against erections. Can you tell me more, please? Yes. So the idea of um, blood blood pressure tablets is that it cause, they cause vasodilation, not all of them, but most of them everywhere in the body. And because of that, it's taking blood away from where you need it in the, in the specific area. There's, it's, it also can interfere with your messages to your brain and blood pressure tablets and antidepressants are the biggest causes of ED in men who haven't had um, prostate cancer treatment. But there are alternatives in the depression and the blood pressure scope where, um, which we can change to that don't cause these issues. So if you were to go into the program, then I would, I will, everyone will get a new patient form and I get them to fill out their medications and I'll look at their medications and make suggestions about what you could change to. And then I'd get you to go back to your general practitioner and get them to talk to you about it. Um, this guy said, hi, Melissa, fantastic presentation. Thank you, glad you enjoyed it. Can you please comment on your experience with patients who have had radiotherapy as opposed to surgery? Yes. So, um, and this would be a really good thing for you to actually listen to um, some of the podcast. And this week's podcast, we interviewed a radio oncologist um, about this exact subject. And we also have done that a few times before. So the difference with people who have radiation therapy is that they often maintain their erections immediately post-treatment, unlike the surgical patients who lose it, but their erectile function goes down over time. So these kind of patients, I think that penile rehabilitation is very, very important to start when you notice a decline in your erectile function. And you're gonna to need to maintain that for, for a very long time because the men who have surgery and then they re get back their spontaneous erection down the track, they can stop the rehab until things go again with aging process. But the guys who have radiotherapy and things decline, then you need, this is a, a job for you. You need to keep exercising your penis and keeping it healthy to maintain function. Uh, so as important, if not more important for patients who have radiotherapy to do penile rehabilitation. How often should you use the Vacurect pump? Well. If you're talking about for rehab, then you should use it, in my opinion, at least every second day, but the more the better. Um, and as I said, the regime that I use for rehab only takes actually about five minutes a day using the Vacurect pump. So it shouldn't be too hard. And I think you should do that. Uh, have you ever hear of using acupuncture for rehab? Yes, I have heard but I can't speak to it because I don't know enough about acupuncture. I am quite happy for people to um, use alternative therapies in conjunction with what I use, as long as they're not gonna cause harm. And acupuncture is certainly something that won't cause harm if done by a qualified person. So 
go for it. I was actually speaking to a patient today in um, Atlanta and he is using some sort of peptide therapy that he got from his naturopath and he is having quite good results with that. So I haven't heard of that before, so I'm interested to find out more. So I'm very open to these things, as long as it's not gonna cause harm. I'm not open to snake oil salesmen who sell you herbal supplements that um, are nothing really and don't work, but I'm definitely open to other natural therapies. So if I think using acupuncture and if it's working for you and it's not doing you any harm, then go for it. Should rehab be done every day? A part of the rehab should be done every day, yes. So you don't have to use a pump every day. As I said, every second day is sufficient, but there's you really need to take a PDE5 inhibitor. So one of the medications we talked about, the vitamin pill for your penis. And you do also need to, um, you do, you do need to think of some other things. We talk a lot about in the program about um, penile massage, which you can do in the shower. So, you know, five minutes a day, five to 10 minutes a day is more than enough. Uh, this guy said, I'm reluctant to take Viagra and the likes as a rehab drug because I'm afraid of its effect on my ability to exercise or weight training. My little experience with Viagra showed that I do get pretty bad headaches after it sometimes, which would definitely impact my ability to exercise. Yes. So. If you're having, it shouldn't affect your ability to exercise unless you're having side effects such as a headache. Um, and as I've said, Viagra is not my drug of choice. I think low dose Cialis is much better and it also stays in your system a lot longer. So you can also take it every second day. So there's certainly options for that. Um, yeah, so it's a very, they are very, very safe drugs, very safe. So I can't stress that enough. And I think they get a bad rap in the media, but they're actually safer than Panadol. So it's just about tweaking a program and the medication to suit you. Um, next question. Appreciate your comments. I had my prostate removal three weeks ago. So at the moment, dripping is my concern. The sexual rehabilitation may be my journey. And the concern for me is getting my wife on board. Yeah, I agree. So I always encourage, um, men to bring their partners to the consults uh, because I think it's great. Like, you know, for, it's, a, it's a couple thing. It affects both of you. So, and I think the problem with wives is they often don't realise until we have a conversation with them that it's not just about sex, that it's also about having a shrinking penis, being able to stand up to pass urine, that this is really attached to your manhood and your masculinity. And it's not all about intercourse. And I think most wives, once they realise that, are really, really happy to be on board. The other thing I think is a lot of wives say to their partners in my consults, it's okay if we never have sex again. I just want you to be alive. And I know that that comes from a good place. Um, unfortunately for them, I watch the guy's face drop because the guy takes it as, oh, she doesn't care if we're ever intimate again. And I don't think that's what she's saying at all. I think often they're saying that to make you feel better rather than ignoring you um what's the next one do you have to modify the program for people who have had radiation therapy want to keep function rather than recovering from it nope the program as it is the rehabilitation program suits people in that situation perfectly it's for rehab is exactly the same for people whether they've had surgery radiation or whatever their loss of function is the only difference is that different people will have to keep going for longer and other people will be able to stop. Uh, is it possible to lobby the urology peak body to get urologists more on board referring patients to comprehensive pre and post-op help? It just seems to take so long to search this stuff out and it's quite time sensitive info. Totally agree. And, um, I haven't lobbied any urologists in other states, but I should, and I will. Um, but I have pretty much got every urologist in Perth referring to me or my colleagues. Uh, so there's not just me in restorative sexual health. I also have a wonderful nurse practitioner called Sharon Stephen. And soon I've got another amazing lady called Kendall Gow starting with me because we're so busy we can't keep up with our face-to-face -face consults and they've both been neurology nurse practitioners for many years and um, yeah so I totally agree with you and yes we need to we've definitely got the West Australian ones on board and we've got we need to get more on board. 
Next, wow, this is great. You guys have asked so many questions. You've only got four left. So have used the pump for penetration, but the idea of rehabilitation and vibration does not seem to, uh, the idea of rehabilitation and vibration does not seem to do a lot. Sorry for the broken messages. Hmm. Sorry, I'm not really sure what you mean about that. Um, have, I'm not sure if you've tried vibration or not, but perhaps you could send me an email at melissa at rshealth.com.au and explain exactly what you mean and I will answer that better. Does DVA cover the cost of the program? No, they don't. Sorry, I tried. I've tried twice now and um, they don't. They will cover the cost of the pump though. Um, but not the cost of the program. Hi, I've tried Viagra, no good. My oral just said, if it's not working, don't bother wasting your money. Would Cialis be better? Different PDE5 medications, resp people respond to the different ones. So that's not entirely true. It is worth trying the others. And also remembering that PDE5 medications are quite cheap now. You know, even Cialis used to be really expensive, but it's off patent now. So you can get a box of um, Cialis, like 28 tablets for $30 now at Chemist Warehouse. So I definitely encourage you to try the other ones. There's Spedra and there's Cialis, but you need to know how to try them. Those, those drugs, those medications for erections all work differently. Some work better without food. Some work, are not affected by food. Some work better in certain situations. And so there's quite a lot of nuances to these drugs. It's not a case of here's a script and just go for it. You actually need to know how it works and when it's gonna work best. So I think you should definitely try the others. And I think if you're not getting any luck, you should definitely try injectable therapies um, or you should try a Vacurect with a ring or you should try all of the above. Uh, another person said, I might've missed it, but do you recommend tablets like Viagra prior to cancer treatment? Plans for robotic. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. And that's what pre prehabilitation is all about. So when we send the program to people, if they're pre-treatment, um, we make it slightly different. So there's for people who are pre-treatment, we concentrate a lot more in the program we send to them on what they can do before the surgery than we do with the guys who are post because they don't want to sit through that probably. So they they are there's two different ones. You need to tell us if you're pre or post, and we send you. Um, it accordingly. Obviously, there are multiple factors involved in getting back to normal. Do you have a feeling of how much your rehab program adds to this? So any data or figures in that regard? That is such a hard question. Um, I can't tell you, I've only launched the rehab program online a few months ago. So I can't give you data on how many people, but I can give you data on the patients I've seen and I've seen thousands of them. And um, as I said earlier, I think it's about 70% of people will return to spontaneous function and the rest, bar about 5%, will be able to return to having an intimate relationship. So, yeah, I think that the odds are good. It's, it's, all, about, it's all about doing something. If you do nothing, you're not going to have any change. So my husband always says, a prior preparation prevents a piss poor performance. And I think that, you know, rehabilitation is definitely one of these things. If you keep doing what you've always done, you're just going to get the same. And it's in the research proves that getting your penis moving and doing things improves sexual function and prevents shrinkage. And so when you get the, um, in answer to this question, I think what you need to do is when you get sent through the webinar, have a look at some of the research papers and read up about it. But yes, I definitely think it makes a difference. Do you change the treatment between non-nerve sparing and nerve sparing? Yes, I do. So if you have non-nerve sparing surgery, you have to be really realistic that you're never going to get spontaneous erection again. So and that's what I mean by, that's why it's so important that people take up these consults that are part of the program. Because what we will do in that situation, the rehab part of it to maintain your penis and your healthy tissue is exactly the same for everybody. But how you get back to having sexual function is different. So someone with non-nerve sparing surgery must use a pump with a ring or injections to be able to have intercourse. Or we need to talk a lot about um, outercourse. And I haven't mentioned outercourse yet, but outercourse is when 
you have sexual intimacy with somebody, but it's not about penetrative sex. And to be honest, penetrative sex is not the be all and end all for many women. So having outer course can be very satisfying for both people. And men can have orgasms without erections. And I talk a lot about that in the program as well. And then we have, thanks for your great information. Does the program help with incontinence, hormone treatment and radiation therapy? I don't help with incontinence, but I do give some very basic tips on incontinence and access to a video of my colleague that I do the penis project with. Um, and yes, it does address hormone treatment and radiotherapy. My GP prescribed me some Viagra pre-op, even though I thought I did not need it. It was good to try before the surgery. It provided me with an experience of context of how it's supposed to work. She's fab. Excellent, excellent GP you have. And when I see people pre-treatment, I always prescribe the three drugs to them as well and ask them to give it a try. So we know which one works best for them before the surgery. And then that's what we aim for post-surgery or post-radiation treatment. So I think you have got a fab GP. She's excellent. If having a face-to-face -face consult with you, can it be claimed on health insurance? Face-to-face uh, -face consults with me are Medicare. So um, every consult you get back $51.85 from Medicare and then there's a gap. Um, yeah, I'm, so I'm the same as a GP. So GPs don't claim on private health. They claim on um, Medicare and that's exactly what I do. And 